Hello. It's Friday, Friday. Gonna get down on Friday. We are on our way to the office. It's about two o'clock. I went and visited my dad and then I ran to the grocery store real quick because I'm starving and need to eat something and I'm just gonna eat my guilty pleasure, which is grocery store sushi. And since I'm pregnant, it is, actually I always just get, pregnant or not, a veggie roll. <laughs> So, once you get to the office, I'm probably gonna eat that. I won't make you guys watch me eat grocery store sushi, but we have a full day of work to do. And what I think I'm gonna do is while I'm eating sushi, I'm going to go through YouTube comments and answer some of y'all's questions that I haven't had the chance to answer yet in this video. So, cause I know a lot of y'all have similar questions so hopefully i can provide some value oh baby's kicking in this video and answer some of y'all's questions but i actually went to the office last night with my brother because i was just so behind on work and my brother's in town so i just photographed stuff and he just kept me company and we just chatted while i worked um and so I got all this stuff from my first thrift trip this week photographed. I need to inventory it next. And then I need to get started on those, what, 11 items that we found last time. So that is the plan today. Just getting work done, you know? And I'm gonna bring you along with me and hopefully give you some motivation while you also work. I think tomorrow I am going to try to go to the bins. Oh, I also have a little bit of shipping to do. Like two items I could ship today, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and set them out and hopefully they pick them up tomorrow. One Mercari sale and one eBay sale. Sales have been pretty slow this week, which is unfortunate, but I think it's my fault um, because I actually thought this was gonna be the best week for sales, but I think it's because I haven't been listing, and that's because I want to start listing really consistently next week which is the first week of january and in order to do that i think i need to give myself a buffer so i'm photographing a ton of things this week hopefully and then those things are for next week and we'll just continue having um, that buffer and that lag so that i can maintain consistency sorry i bought a new tripod and it's not working so <laughs> this is the second <laughs> tripod that's not working. I'm going to have to send this one back to you. And I'm going to have to figure out a new way to film in the car. If you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. But hopefully I've found a solution between now and when this video gets posted. But anyway, I'm going to log off here so I don't get in a wreck. <laughs> and I will see you in the office. And we'll get stuff done and we'll answer some questions. So, all right. See you there. Okay, well, I really needed that lunch. <laughs> Feels so much better. I was getting like hangry. Oh, I actually need to upload the photos. So actually, I went through and got y'all's questions. And one of the questions, I don't know, I answered it kind of in my very first vlog, but I don't think I went over the specifics. Cat Funk's Fabulous Finds asked this question: What kind of camera do you use? And the reason I use a DSLR uh, is because when I hired employees to photograph, I basically couldn't force them to use their personal devices, such as their phone. So I had to provide them with something to take photos with. And I had this already, actually. I had purchased it for YouTube, because I used to do a lot of sit-down videos. So then I decided, okay, I'll use it for YouTube videos, but then also use it at the office. So we kind of shared it, but it was used much more for taking photos and now it's almost used exclusively for taking photos unless I have a sit down video which as y'all know I don't do that often so anyway it's a Canon 77D DSLR camera I don't think you need to use a DSLR camera for reselling I think you can use your phone and it's perfectly fine and in some ways more efficient. And if you did want to use a DSLR camera, I wouldn't even recommend this one. If for whatever reason you wanted to, it's in, I think it's linked to my Amazon, but there's newer ones that are better. This one's kind of old, but yeah, I, I do like, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, there's a reason I stick with this. I do like the crispness 
of the photos that come out of the D this camera or DSLR cameras in general. I'm certainly not a photography expert. <laughs> not even close. I, ha I do notice a difference and I just like honestly not having my phone like just inundated with photos from reselling. So that's kind of a nice benefit of having it separated. I like to keep work and life separate as much as possible just so that I can have a place to relax. And if my phone's just like, and that goes for, you know, having an office space, I really don't think I could go back to doing reselling at my house. I thought about it, but I don't think I could. And the same thing applies for my phone, just having it flooded with reselling photos wouldn't be fun. But anyway, I'm gonna, I, what I do is I upload my photos from when I photograph into a Google Drive. And then when I get home, I edit the photos and list. And I just use Lightroom to edit because it's pretty fast. And I can apply a filter to many photos pretty easily. Okay, let's do some shipping. I just have an eBay sale and a Mercari sale, like I said. Poshmark has been pretty slow for me. We will do Mercari first. I sold the last one of these that I have. It's a free people movement Pacific long sleeve top. This I got in that free people palette that I mention all the time and I don't have access to free people palettes anymore. So, <laughs> so <laughs> if I did, maybe I would be buying them. I don't know, but I haven't looked for them and, but I don't really have an interest in it um, right now. But there was a time in which I bought a free people palette and it was a huge palette, lots of stuff. I think it was like 800 to 1,000 items, but it was very expensive. It was like $11.34, I think, per item. So my cost of goods was quite high. And so I gotta ship it before I can tell you what my profit is because I don't know what my shipping costs are gonna be. But anyway, I had this listed for 35 and I received an offer for 28, which I accepted. That was over on Mercari. I, I am cross-listing to Mercari currently. Okay, and I what I do on Mercari, so basically I don't pre-weigh my items, which means that for eBay, I do flat shipping. I don't do calculated shipping. And then for Mercari, unfortunately, I can't just set a price for shipping. I basically have to weigh it. So what I do instead is just do free shipping and then I will pay for shipping through Pirate Ship. But because Mercari has the lowest platform fees of any of these platforms, because they don't have promoted listings, etc., and it's a 10% plus a payment processing fee, I actually have the highest <laughs> gross profit margins on Mercari than anywhere else, even though I do free shipping. So it works out in the end, I think. So my profit for this sale is $8.24, which isn't great, but $19.58 will be deposited into my bank account, which is good. And of course that cost of goods being so high, it just eats into my profit, but I'm just happy. I've had it for what, 800 days, probably something like that. 795 days, so it's good to see it go, good to recoup that cost of goods and good to make a little profit. And then my next sale, similarly, I think my profit's gonna be really low on this one too. It is another really old liquidation purchase. I've had it for 1,365 days and um, my cost of goods was even higher on this. In fact, I lost money on this sale, technically. But it was literally one of my oldest items that I have and so I'm so happy it sold. But it sold on eBay. It's a pair of earrings and I sold them for $15. My cost of goods was like $16 or something. <laughs> so, you know, it <laughs> doesn't take a math genius to do the equation on that one. Okay, so BB Pocketbook asked me a question about liquidation. Here, I'll read their comment. Would you consider doing some liquidation of some sort for a while to fill in the gaps when you can't get to the bins? I find that if I'm selected with liquidation, it is actually quite profitable. Of course, nothing is better than handpicking your items, but I just don't have time to get enough with my toddler and my fifth baby on the way. Wow, fifth baby, congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. And also, when are you due with your second? So right now I'm not going to do liquidation. Just be honestly, because of the upfront cost, <laughs> like it's just thousands of dollars up front. And 
very quickly if you don't have, well, it depends on what kind of liquidation you're talking about. But generally, you know, the type of liquidation pallets that I used to buy, several thousand dollars up front. And then I just don't have the manpower to process it fast enough. So I would just run into cash flow issues pretty quickly. It made sense when I was hiring employees and was processing 30 items a day. But now doing 10 items a day, I mean, it would take me like months <laughs> to get through one pallet. And that also just like completely sucks all the joy out of reselling for me. I actually talked about why I decided to leave liquidation and do just bins essentially in a video where it's like, I can't do it anymore, which I can link on the screen. But yeah, so for that reason, I don't think I would ever, I'm gonna go back to liquidation anytime soon. Maybe if like an amazing opportunity came my way that I couldn't pass up. I would figure out a way to do it, but since I'm not looking for those opportunities, they haven't really come knocking on my door, so. So no, probably not, but I mean, I think it is good. I'm constantly thinking about how can I just get more inventory easier, but of course I don't want to sacrifice quality and I do want to be selective with what I am buying and I would like to keep my cost of goods low, so it's hard. It's hard finding really good items that are cheap, <laughs> you know, especially in an easy way because if that existed everyone would take advantage of it but especially when i go on maternity leave i mean that's a, you know oh well, my second baby is due april 1st so i have about three months to figure out what i'm gonna do then but i'll probably just take some time off and just ship that's what i did last time and then after that i'm not sure what i'll do okay well oh i guess i was gonna tell you my profit for this eBay sale, uh, my profit was negative $7.42, <laughs> but I'm getting $9.29 in my bank account, so not bad, you know, making some of my money back, but just need to see that go. I'm excited, my favorite part, inventorying items, so let's get to that. Okay, so I actually have a question for y'all. Um, you know, we do like time lapses in our videos where I'm working and we just speed it up and put it to music. Let me know in the comments down below if you like that, if you don't like that, if you don't really care, because we can definitely do it differently. But I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do that. I'm going to work and just do kind of a time lapse and you can work along with me. But then when I need to break, I'll pause <laughs> and I'll move slower and answer a few of y'all's questions. So, all right. Let's get to work. So I actually measured and inventoried everything except for these last three dresses and it's 352 now. I've got to leave here. At like 4.45. So by the time we're done here, we'll probably have 45 minutes. So I thought I would go ahead and answer a question while I'm measuring these. And then we'll also put the inventory items away and hang up the other stuff and maybe if we're very efficient, have time to steam it, but we'll see. Let me just write down this measurement real quick. Okay, so this is a question I actually get pretty often. This was by L. Jack. CK8UH. Okay, so L Jack will go with. How do you determine what goes to Crossroads versus Poshmark or eBay? So basically, the there are there's definitely an overlap in the inventory I would pick up to take to Crossroads versus what I would sell. And in terms of brands and styles, etc. However, there it's like a Venn diagram. <laughs> Almost there are definitely items I would not sell that I would take to Crossroads. So those things typically include really trendy brands that just don't resell for a lot of money or certain styles within trendy brands that just won't garner a very high resale price. You know, Urban Outfitters, uh, Brandy Melville, you know, some Madewell, some Zara, things like that, that they will take at Crossroads. They'll give me like, They'll give me 50% of whatever they price it at. So for a lot of those brands, they'll price it at like $16. They'll give me $8, but then I can go in there and find an item that has been marked half off that does sell well on reseller marketplace. Basically flip that $8 and make a whole lot more for, from it. So it's typically items that 
buy brands that I would pick up, brands I like selling, like Madewell, etc. But because of the style, it won't sell for more than 20, 25 bucks. So therefore, it's not really worth my time to invest in it. Because listing, photographing, steaming, and measuring, inventory all takes time. And so it, it's better to allocate that time to an item that's going to have a greater return. And if I can do that by just taking a lower ASP item to Crossroads and just basically exchanging it for a higher ASP item, that's great. That's the goal. So I hope that helped answer your question. Also, sometimes like <laughs> if an item has a flaw or something and I just don't want to deal with it, like, and I think Crossroads would be okay with that flaw, I'll take it there too or like I'll just try out brands that I would never sell I'm looking at my pile right now like Target and actually another reason that I pick things like from Target or whatever up just to try to see if Crossroads will take it is because I get such a really good discount on my cost of goods at the bins if I hit 25 pounds and there are certainly days in which I'm struggling to hit 25 pounds so Picking up items to take to Crossroads really does help me do that. Okay, here's a comment and a question from Jessica Bratt, 8599. And it is, I love the behind the scenes stuff. I feel like I learned new ideas or way of doing things to expedite processes. Like I was today years old when I learned that you can bulk print shipping labels on Poshmark. So yeah, if you didn't know, you can. That is a new feature. I mean, it's not actually a new feature, but it's a feature that Poshmark added within my reselling lifetime um, that you can bulk print labels. They just print out of order for whatever reason, which is annoying, but whatever. It's better than not being able to print bulk labels at all, which was the case like a few years ago, or maybe a couple years ago, I don't know, I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, she asked, how many hours a day or week would you say you put in as a full-time reseller? So the term full-time reseller, if I use it, which sometimes I do, I use pretty loosely. It's my job. It's what I do more than anything else. But I really work two to four hours a day on it. So that's not full-time hours. My schedule, my work schedule, and Matt and I basically both work half days every day. And then we take care of Billy Lou half days. So... We each get to work and we each get to take care of our child and in the future our children. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I work in the afternoon and I technically have the hours of 12.30 to 5. However, I rarely get out the door before like 1, 1.30. And then on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, I work from 8 till 12.30 and we flip Sundays. So... Sometimes I work morning, sometimes I work afternoon, and a lot of times I like to take Sunday off if I can. In terms of, I mean, I'm not really taking it off, I'm just doing like household things instead of reselling things, but like this Sunday, I'm definitely gonna work on reselling, so it's not always the case that I can do that. So that's my like life schedule. <laughs> and I actually really, really like it because it took a, if you watched the vlogs in the very beginning, I was we were trying to kind of figure it out in real time. I think we've landed on this and it works really well because Billy Lou is different in the morning versus the afternoon. So it's good to have a mix of that. You know, your productivity is different in the morning versus the afternoon. I can do, I can go to do things like go get breakfast with my dad, which I do every Tuesday and Thursday uh, typically. And so I can do that in the morning before I go to work but that is part of my that cuts into my work time and you know if we have to run any other errands without Billy Lou that also would cut into our work time or any appointments or anything like that so but I just really like it because there was a, definitely a time where I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom like right after I had Billy Lou I was like all I want is to be a stay-at-home mom but now I really like the mix I really appreciate having both. Being able to split my time between being with her and split my time between being with work. So, and I think Matt really likes that too. And I also think it's just good for Billy Lou to be with both parents, you know, and it's definitely a really unique privileged situation, but one that we definitely designed intentionally. And I like it a lot and I hope that we can maintain it uh, when we launch our startup and we have a baby <laughs> next year. 
hopefully both those things go smoothly. Things might shift around. I think mean, these will inevitably shift around, so we'll just see where we can land on that. Okay, so let's go put these things away, and then we will hang up our stuff that we thrifted. Uh, what was that? In our last vlog. <laughs> Which I'll link up on the screen in case you didn't watch the last vlog, but I think it was like two days ago. Okay, let's go. Okay, I just did something that I think is brilliant. All the stuff that was in this thing, I distributed around this table, uh, d depending on, you know, where it's going. And so it's going to be so much faster for me to inventory. Anyway, this is really only um, useful for my specific inventory system, so. But I'm just very happy with what I decided to do. It's going to be fast. Okay, next question uh, is, love these new videos. Thank you all so much for every single comment like that because, you know, doing this was like a completely new experiment and definitely very different than the years we've put in on YouTube. The fact that some of y'all really like it makes me so, so happy. So, when you say listen consistently, if you list five days a week, five to ten items a day, is that consistent? Or would you say that you have to list seven days a week to be consistent? No, I think consistent really just, honestly, comes down to whatever that means to you. And I've talked to other resellers about this very question too, like very big resellers. And I would say like the really big ones, especially the eBay-centric ones, tend to list every single day. And what they'll do is they'll just schedule their listings within eBay, but I've talked to others that are, say, you know, as long as you're just listing on whatever schedule works for you, however many works for you on a really consistent basis, that's great. And I agree with that uh, advice. Okay, let's put some away real quick. Okay, so here's a comment slash question by Sandra Jackus5740. So thank you also for commenting and leaving your questions on my videos. It helps the videos a lot and it's also just so fun to read. We put a lot of work in these videos and it's just nice to hear from y'all and to know that there are people watching. Um, okay, so yes, keep doing your vlogs. I really love them. You have really helped me in my reseller journey. Thank you so much. Uh, wondering if you could give me some reseller advice on something. Okay. So this was an interesting like, situation. I recently sold a new attack item that I purchased wholesale. The buyer is now asking me for the receipt for my purchase. It was a mystery box, so not itemized. Has this ever happened to you? What would you do in this case? And do you have any thoughts about why the buyer is asking for this? Thanks so much. I have run into this exact issue before, at least, if, you know, probably a half dozen times. And this was 13 days ago, so you... <laughs> probably resolved the issue but what I do and what I guess I would recommend y'all do is there are like a few different answers you can give first of all if you were to have purchased it for yourself you know there's a good chance you don't keep the receipts that you buy for yourself so you could always just say oh I don't have the receipt anymore <laughs> but um, it is new to tag and it's authentic I think the reason they're asking is because for authenticity purposes. I think that's the number one reason. It depends on the item. The other thing you can say is, oh, I'm selling this for a friend. I, I say that a lot. I'm selling this for a friend and she doesn't have the receipt anymore. Um, but if I can answer any other questions, please let me know. It is authentic. If it's inventory from Nordstrom or something, you can say, it is an authentic from Nordstrom, but I just no longer have the receipt. And just say that you get it from a friend. <laughs> the same goes for like when people ask, you know, can, can you try this on? I always say, even if it is my size, oh, it's not my size. So, and if they're like, why are you selling something that's not your size? You can say, I'm selling for a friend or, you know, I gained weight, none of your business, no. <laughs> or now what I just say is, oh, I can't, I'm pregnant, which is, no one can argue with that. Okay, anyway, let's finish putting this up but while I am putting this away I'll answer this question by Curly Joes or I think that's how you pronounce it Curly Joss uh, how did your whatnot sale go so I did a whatnot sale earlier this month and it'd been a while since I had done one and it went really well like it was really fun I can definitely understand why people love doing it you know you buy an item one day you can sell it the next and you know you're gonna sell it uh, it's definitely going to be less, typically, there are exceptions, it's typically going to be less than you what you would a reseller platform like eBay or Poshmark, but you sell it so quickly and so reliably that it's typically, there are definitely advantages to it. However, I am 
not, it, it just, I, I'll never, I don't think I'll ever be like a live seller primarily. I might sprinkle in shows every once in a while, maybe in the future. I don't know, I wouldn't count on it, <laughs> but uh, maybe. But the reason being, it's just very difficult for me to talk for an hour and be live for an hour and essentially be a QVC host for an hour. It's not something I necessarily enjoy because I get really nervous that I'm gonna say the wrong thing. I run out of things to say. Uh, I feel my energy dipping about like, you know, midway through. I don't know, it just, being live is like, you know, I used to do Instagram lives all the time and YouTube lives and all that. It's just very nerve wracking for me. And uh, I always like have like, I'm just like jittery for like an hour after going live anywhere. <laughs> so I don't think, I'm sure if I did it like all the time, I would definitely lose that. But it's just not very attractive to me for that reason, just because my own personality, my own maybe social anxiety, which I definitely deal with. I don't know. It's just, I don't, I, right now it, I'm not ever, right now I'm not ever. <laughs> no, I don't see myself ever becoming a primarily live seller but I think it definitely some people thrive in that lane and I'm glad it exists because they're clearly buyers and they're clearly really good sellers for it so okay let's go hang up this inventory and maybe get some things steamed okay this is actually a question that a lot of y'all asked Debbie asked it, Kiss the Boys Inc. asked it, Organizers Are Us asked it, and it's basically how do you find out if something is, specifically with Zara, a blogger favorite? And what I'll do is when I'm in the store, I'll just find the style, which you can either do with the Google app, um, and you can take a photo of it, and oftentimes if the piece is unique enough, you can find it that way, or you can, there's there is a number on the Zara tag. It's got two slashes in it. And sometimes when I Google that, I'll also find it. But anyway, I'll find the style name and then I'll search the style on Google. And if it is one that is a blogger favorite, you will, and you go to images, you'll see a bunch of different bloggers essentially in that outfit and it's photographed and they're photographed in that outfit and they've shared it on their blog. So, and then also, if you check comps on Poshmark or probably even eBay, it will, a lot of people will have tagged it as a blogger favorite. So that's, those are the two ways that you can tell if something is a blogger favorite. And typically, if something is a blogger favorite, it's a, going to be in lower supply and higher demand. But that's not always the case. Just because something was a blogger favorite, especially if it was like, you know, five, six, seven years ago, then it might not even, matter anymore so oh this has some dang this has some serious um deodorant stain i don't think you can see it this is that black halo dress that i found which is a really good find it's way worse in person than it is coming up on the camera but i think i can get that out if i just hand wash it with some detergent so i think i am going to do that i'm sure it's dry clean only but let me look up this style 203326 it was priced well enough. Okay, yeah, this is the Jackie O dress. Yay, I think this is a really good one. So this retails for $390. So I am going to take the extra time to hand wash this. I'm gonna set it aside. And then this Frank and Eileen dress, which is a good find. Okay, do I have any other questions that I saved to answer? Oh, someone said, okay. Brett Lott said, I love that work slash shipping table. Thank you, <laughs> I do too. And my mom actually gave me that because she had, she had it uh, as a gift wrapping table. And when she downsized, she no longer had room for a gift wrapping table. <laughs> but, uh, which I think is cool. I'll probably have it my entire life. Like if I stop reselling, I would probably use it as a gift wrapping table. I love gift wrapping. But anyway, it's like, I can find it online on Amazon. I think I even have it in my Amazon favorites, but it's very expensive. So if you invest in it, invest, you know, I think it's could to potentially be worth it because it's just so well organized. That wasn't the question. <laughs> the question is how many items do you have listed and how many can you store in your room? So on Poshmark or eBay, I have 1400 items listed, but it's because I have so many multi-quantity items, 
like once I get all this stuff inventoried, I will have 1,914 items. I have 1,800 slots for clothes, and then I have, of course, a bunch of shoes and boots and accessories and then oversized. And so, yeah, it's about 1,900 pieces, which is a really good spot. I don't really want to grow too much beyond that. I mean, and now I can't grow too much beyond that. Ooh, some coins. <laughs> a nickel and a penny. Oh, and a dime. All right. This is so cute. I really wish I could keep it. It's got a little zipper pocket inside the pocket. It's a Patagonia jacket with like patch pockets. That's so cute. So yeah, I really like that, having that much inventory. I'm currently not listing enough where I'm growing, but I do have a little bit of room to grow um, because I think I have probably like 1700 clothing. So I have about a hundred in flexing, but hopefully as I list more, I'll also sell more and eventually reach a good equilibrium. That, those were all y'all's questions. If you liked me answering questions like this, be sure to leave me another question down below in this video and maybe I can do it again and answer any remaining questions that you have for me in a future vlog. I think Friday's a good day to do that too because it's typically, it's not a sourcing day. I'm tr trying to get a lot of work done, <laughs> all the work that I didn't get done in earlier in the week. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here and uh, cause I'm just gonna go steam some stuff and then head out. I have about 20 minutes to do that. But thank you all so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. It was fun answering your questions. Uh, I do see some people concerned that I'm out of breath <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> And that's just because I'm pregnant. I'm sorry. If I could, it, I know it's annoying to some people. If I could change it, I would, but I'm pregnant for the next three months. So it's probably only going to get worse. I'm 27 weeks on Monday, which is, I think, entering my third trimester, which is crazy. All right. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay. Love y'all. Bye.